Okay, I can tell a lot of you are upset or annoyed with this video from the get-go, so I'll just fully disclose that this is kind of a joke and kind of serious at the same time. Full disclosure you guys need to understand about me, I am really not that much of a car person. I am a tech person, and I see the most amount of growth and development in the car industry coming from Tesla, and that's why I've been talking more and more about Tesla lately. It's because I'm interested in them, and I feel like smartphone markets have kind of peaked in regards to design and improvements that they can do so that's why i've been covering more about tesla and if you're like a car enthusiast or you care about performance in a vehicle there's probably a lot of things in today's video that you're going to be mad at me about so please do forgive me for this video i'm not going to make many more like this in the future but here's why i don't like or care about the tesla roadster and why i won't be buying one let's begin <laughs> Now let me also fully bring up a few things I like about the Roadster. The range is insane. The fact that it's an electric car that can go 620 miles on a single charge, that's really, really good. In fact, I'd be willing to pay a lot extra if they brought that range to basically any other car in the Tesla lineup. I wish it was available on anything but the Roadster, but still, the range is very impressive. And also the aesthetics of it. It's a very good looking car in regards to sports vehicles. I'm sure it caters to a certain demographic. There's a lot of people out there that don't like the design of it or prefer other car brand designs, which is very much a personal preference thing, and it's not very much based on functionality or objectivity. It all kind of comes down to just what you find the best in your opinion. And in my opinion, the Roadster is a very beautiful car. It looks very, very good, and I'm not saying that if someone ever offered to drive me around in one for a day, I would deny that offer. Of course, if there was some fan or a friend of mine that rented one or bought one and wanted to drive me around in the Roadster for a little bit, I would gladly take the wheel and try it out. But the reason and I think the car as a whole is kind of stupid is because in my opinion for my use cases I see cars as transportation devices and the Roadster is a very very impractical transportation device compared to other cars that Tesla makes one there's a lot of compromises you're making for very few benefits so what are the big functional benefits you really get out of the Roadster well for one the range and for two the performance that's pretty much the biggest selling point you can get people excited about about with it. The fact that it has these insane specs that sadly ended up not being as great as Elon originally promised. So if you guys remember back at the event, they said that the Roadster could do 0 to 60 in 1.9 seconds, which for production cars has not been able to be achieved. And once you get to that 0 to 60 in around two second zone, it starts to matter very little about how fast the motors in the car can actually spin and a lot more with what kind of tires you have or what kind of road you're driving on that should actually allow for that that type of speed to be noticeable. But still, the sad news of this event was he corrected someone later on Twitter saying that the base model of the Roadster actually goes 0 to 60 in 2.1 seconds, which is still very, very fast. Don't get me wrong, that's one of the fastest cars in the world, but if you compare it to what else Tesla is offering, you're paying a lot for that extra 0.3 second difference. And for Elon to go on Twitter and correct people and let them know that, hey, by the way, it's not actually that fast. You have to buy like the upgraded package that will come with air tanks, the SpaceX edition Roadster that will allow it to go from 0 to 60 in 1.9 seconds, so it's going to cost even more. <laughs> I encourage you guys to realize for a second just exactly what you can get with a Tesla Model S. So keeping in mind that the Roadster starts at $200,000, which in regards to other sports cars it's competing with, it is actually quite affordable and quite obtainable for a lot of people compared to the million dollar sports cars it's faster than. But still, a performance Model S right now in 2019 is just about at $100,000. And if you check out their site, this thing doesn't have a crazy range, like 620 miles. But remember, 99% of the time, you're not driving that far in a single day. Most Americans drive around 30 miles a day. Maybe, let's be generous, and double that to 60 miles a day. You're not really going to utilize that 620-mile range in the Roadster unless you're doing a lot of road trips, which, given the Roadster's low amount of storage and the fact that it's such a small car, I doubt many people would want to spend, you know, five hours in that small, that compact of a car, you're likely going to have to stop, take breaks, and there will be plenty of spaces for supercharging if you were to just go ahead and get a performance Model S. For the everyday stuff, you're never really going to utilize that 620 mile range. Let me remind you, it's still very impressive. It's cool that they can do that, but the only functional advantage you'll really get with that range is the road trips where you're going very, very far in a single day. And also maybe if you have a Roadster, but don't want to plug it in, 
when you get home every day because most people with EVs charge them at home. So the 345 mile range you could get with a Performance Model S is going to be more than enough for your day-to-day -day uses and will get you plenty far on road trips so you can still supercharge it when you need to take a break anyway. And also the zero to 60 speed of the Performance Model S is 2.4 seconds. For a $100,000 car, this car has four doors by the way and much more cargo space if you wanted to do road trips. I hate to break it to you, but the Model S would be far more practical. Also rocking two displays on the inside instead of one, which brings me to the next point about the Roadster that I'm not really that big a fan of, the interior. And I'm a minimal guy. I love the Model 3 interior. In my opinion, that's like peak design of an inside of a car because I don't like a lot of busyness. I'm not a fan of the Model S interior just because there's a lot of AC vents and stuff like that. And I prefer a much more minimal clean looking inside. I'm fine with the Model 3 interior. It's the fact that they went with a portrait mode display with the Roadster. Side note, it only has one cup holder. I mean, come on, $200,000 and it's only one cup holder. You're going to be driving this thing alone probably, or if you're driving it with someone else, they're going to have to hold their own drink. Also, the beauty of the Model 3 design is that it's a landscape display. So when full self-driving becomes available, or even today when you're parked or supercharging, you get to watch YouTube videos, you get to watch Netflix or play games on there. Cuphead is coming next month. All kinds of games are being added to the Tesla. They really got it right with the 15 inch landscape display available in the Model 3 because that's going to be much better for viewing content and it also allows you to comfortably put your phone right beneath the display, have your phone be charging or putting up like a second navigational app or whatever you want on your phone. You can have it just right there charging and still view it and touch the display on your smartphone while also not intruding on the Model 3's landscape practical display. Roadster isn't very smartphone friendly because there's not really a place to put your phone because they had this giant portrait mode screen, which by the way, based on the pictures they've shown has fairly sizable bezels. And I know people are like, well, this is the prototype. That's not the full production model. The full production model could change. But the original Model 3s, while they did have some differences with their official launches, the insides remained mostly the same. The display from the Model 3 prototype and the Model 3 production model didn't change very much. So I imagine that once the Roadster officially comes out and there is a production model of it that you can buy, the screen's probably going to look fairly similar and it does not look great for playing games on or viewing content on, which are huge incentives for people to buy a Tesla over other cars out there. The Roadster is going to be great for TV shows and YouTube videos where people want to compare it to other supercars out there. It's kind of like my opinion on 5G phones. 5G is really, really cool when you do that internet speed test and you see, wow, it goes really high, but then in your day-to-day -day uses, is there anything on the phone that really takes advantage of gigabit speeds? 99% of the time, no, there isn't. You're browsing Twitter, you're texting, you're checking email, all of those things can be done on LTE anyway. I have a very similar opinion about the Roadster. Sure, you can go zero to 60 in 2.1 seconds when you're like, entering the on-ramp and then 99% of the time you're going to be stuck behind some Corolla on the road going 65 in a 70 zone and you're going to end up not really taking advantage of all this raw power you love the Roadster for and you're going to be paying double compared to the Model S which can still go 0 to 60 in 2.4 seconds. Base model Roadster at $200,000, 2.1 seconds. So that's a 0.3 second difference that you're spending $100,000 extra on and also sacrificing the dual displays for people who care about that. You're also sacrificing the four-door option that the Model S has, the extra cargo space, all for the sake of... 0.3 seconds, just a tiny bit faster. Yes, there will be that upgradable option that will allow the Roadster to go 1.9 seconds, but even that, people, is a difference of about 0.6 seconds, literally a half a second. It's like the difference between 0 to 60 in 1, 2, boom, versus 1, 2, that's what you paid for. You're likely paying an extra $150,000 for that extra one, two, just a tiny bit faster. I know there's people out there that really, really care about every point second of performance. It's just a tiny bit faster or those top speed specifications. You can go over 250 miles an hour in the Roadster. Yeah, where are you gonna do that? Not on the freeway, you're gonna do it on a racetrack, which in that case, people, I mean, instead of buying like a quarter million dollar car, won't there be companies that will let you rent it for like an hour? Sure, you don't get the key the car at the end of it, but it's not like when you buy a Roadster, you're going to be able to take advantage of all those features all the time. You're going to be paying real top dollar for a car that will make a little bit of difference than the Model S, about 
0.01% of the time. When you go on a racetrack and you can take it over 200 miles an hour or on that one time you're entering the freeway and there's no one in front of you and you can go 0 to 60. 0.3 to 0.5 seconds faster. Also, you have to deal with that smaller portrait mode display, which isn't good for viewing content. Bigger bezels, I would much rather have the Model 3 with its two cup holders and also a good amount of space for both the driver and the passenger to rest their phone, let their phone charge up or let their phone control the music or the podcast or the YouTube video that's being played via Bluetooth to the car. I also believe that steering wheel they keep demoing inside the Roadster isn't legal in a lot of places, so I highly doubt that the inside of the Roadster will actually have a steering wheel that looks like that. Maybe in certain places it will, but anywho, the Roadster is a beautiful car, and I get what the purpose of it was. It's not meant to be an everyday consumer car. It's not meant to be something everyday people just buy and use to get to work and back. It's meant to be a supercar, and ultimately, the purpose of the Roadster is to just showcase that gas cars are not the future. EVs can be better in every conceivable way, whether it be range or whether it be acceleration, raw sheer performance and torque and all that. I get the purpose of the Roadster. It's just, in my opinion, I was already convinced of EVs being better. I don't think they needed to go extremely over the top, especially when Tesla is having such a hard time turning a profit lately. Do they really want to spend this much time and money on research and development and on manufacturing on a car that so few people are going to buy? And then there was the referral program, which I thought was so dumb because they let people, if they got more than like 55 referrals, get a free Tesla Roadster. That's a quarter million dollar car they're just giving away because certain YouTubers have big enough audiences that they just put their referral code in the description and boom, all right, we got to give that YouTuber a free Roadster. If you look up how many people had the equivalent amount of referrals, Tesla will now have to give away nearly $16 million worth of Tesla Roadsters because of this referral program. You really think it's those YouTubers selling the Tesla or was it just people who were gonna buy Teslas anyway and decided to use a referral code so that they can get the free supercharging and then the YouTuber gets to benefit by, hey, I get a free supercar. I'm happy for those YouTubers. I'm not mad at you for taking advantage of that referral program. Heck, if it was still a thing, I would probably do it when I get my Tesla, but as a company, as a business decision, I thought it was a very, very bad idea to just start agreeing that, yeah, if a YouTuber's code is used 55 times, we'll just give him a quarter million dollar car. That's way too easy. It should have given them like a massive discount on a Roadster. Maybe like 55 referrals gives you a 50% discount. So now a $250,000 car is now $125,000. So it's more reasonable, more obtainable, but just straight up giving it away, I feel like was a huge mistake. And if Tesla was turning a huge profit and they were making tons of money, I would feel differently. I would be like, sure, give away as many Roadsters as you want. Give away Model S's and 3's all the time. Every month do another car giveaway. That's great, but your company's losing money and you need to focus on turning a profit. Don't go blowing it all on supercars and then start giving them away to people. Just feels like a really bad idea in my opinion. And while I'm excited for the Roadster to come out, all of you people who've ordered one or are waiting on yours, I'm excited to see your faces when you slam on that accelerator pedal and go zero to 60 in around two-ish seconds, which you could still do on the Performance Model S, but hey, pay top dollar for that 0.3 seconds and boom. There, $100,000. That was so worth it, wasn't it? And also that tiny screen. So that anyway summarizes why I will not be buying the Tesla Roadster. And ever since it was unveiled, I always felt like I didn't quite get it. I get that the car enthusiasts are fascinated by it. People who care about speed and all that really, really are blown away. But if you clicked on my video, you're coming from my perspective. And in my perspective, it makes absolutely no sense that people are willing to pay that much for such a small difference. And I realized ever since it was unveiled, I never really got to make a video dedicated just to the Roadster and why. I don't really get it, but at the same time, I kind of do get it, but maybe Tesla should have waited a few more years before they start just trying to flex on everybody. Also, one minor note, the other slight minor reason, this isn't a big deal, the other tiny, tiny final note I'll end on for the reason I'm not buying the Tesla Roadster, it's too expensive, I can't afford it. I don't have enough money, so that that's also there. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. This is your Tesla Sheep here, and I'll see you guys in the next one.